أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم So this is one of those interesting scenarios where most of you will spend the first three minutes figuring out what I'm all about. Like a used car salesman, you're going to see what I'm selling you. So I'd like to not waste your time and split the room into two groups of people. Those people who are here to listen to a talk, please make sure the wall stays up. Thank you. For those here are to do an activity, for those of you who realize this is, I think, 28 minutes before iftar on the 15th or 16th day of your fast of the greatest Ramadan in 30 years, how do I make that calculation? You can understand that the longest days of the year fall now. So is there any greater opportunity in the greatest act of ibadah of Siyam? Is there any year you could fast longer than this one in our hemisphere? Yes or no? No. So those of you who are here and recognize, I can give a very great talk when you can go on YouTube and watch a talk. Or we could sit here and those people who are, who are a part of the experience, who are not here to hear, but are present to listen and respond, I ask you to come just a smidgen forward. That way we can make a differentiation of what we're doing. And those who are here, maybe they'll hear something good. It doesn't matter who you are in any case, because the wall's got to stand up, guys. Someone's got to hold it up. You don't know about that. So with that, those of you who are here for the experience, I hope you can understand. Everything that needed to be said about Helping Hand has been said. I will not watch these videos anymore. It's offensive to me. Six times a, a week, I watch the video and it hurts my feelings. Because somehow, that lady in the purple dupatta, she had to be sick so that you could love her enough to give money that's shameful. But if we valued ourself, no video would be played. And I do, I ask helping hand in every relief organization, when did Muhammad Rasulullah get up and say, hey, look at the dead people, guys, give us some money. He said, if you believe in Allah, if you believe in you, then you will give. So I would like to, and I'm not sure how much time, if there's someone between me and Salatul Maghrib, please let me know. I'd like to do four activities. Number one, you are in the state. How many people are fasting? I know this sounds rhetorical. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. For those of you who think it's a gift, I was not able to fast for five years of my life. Five years. If I tried to fast, I bled from my mouth, from the bathroom. And for five years, fasting was taken away. I used to come to lead taraweeh, and everyone was like, how was the fast? I was like, I don't know. So when you smile, I just want to tell you, five years it was gone. And I said, oh Allah. The first year everyone says, hey, that must have been great, right? I don't got to fast. Then you're like, no, but this is what I missed. The 23 minutes before Salatul Maghrib, when I could ask Allah for anything, because this part of me was empty, and this part of me was full. So I ask you today for four activities. Activity number one, let us make a dua for ourselves. Because my goal by this evening is if you value yourself greatly, then you will not give a hundred or twenty dollars. You will sit here and say in the greatest Ramadan in this hemisphere for 30 years, you will say, Allah, I dedicate to 10,000 orphans. It might take me the rest of my life, but I make that commitment. Twenty, thirty dollars, friends, that's to make you feel good. You want to feel good? Go pray to Raka. You want to become a miracle here on earth? Decide to change people's lives to the barakah Allah gave you. Activity one, all of you are fasting, alhamdulillah. Those of you who are not, may Allah give you health and the inspiration to fast. Number two, I wish to say astaghfirullah seven times. Can we practice once with five syllables, please? Astaghfirullah. Perfect. Always on the five syllables. We'll do it together in a moment. The third activity, and I believe that will take us to about 8.10. How many of us know the name of our Lord? What is the name of our Lord? What's our, what's our God's name? 
Allah Azza wa Jal, right? So I got on the plane, I was really excited, my wife said something fantastic to me on the plane, and as we were flying, what do you, when your wife says something great to you, what do you want to say? It was, it was better than Alhamdulillah. This was a really good, I'll tell you the good news maybe another time. But I wanted, yeah, I was on the plane wanting to scream Allah. Right, that's where I was. So I realized screaming Allahu Akbar on a plane, looking like this, probably not the best idea, okay? Those of you who are like, brother, do it for Islam. No, brother. So here, here's the real thought though. How many other names does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have? A minimum of 99, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and says, if you look, you'll find 250 plus. But how many of us right now, if you want to, have the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on their phone? Anybody has it? Okay, if you don't, you could take out your phone right now just in a, a few moments. AT&T people, you have two bars. And go to the app store and download. It's a free app called 99 Names. Because after 8 o'clock, I would like to read all the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that takes us four minutes, do you understand every time you say Allah Azza wa Jal's name, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Al-Malik Al-Quddus, Barakallahu Fikum. So I, 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 uh, every time you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, what happens? A different door of mercy opens. Uh, let me try. How many people are in debt? I was a little while ago in my life. In, in financial debt, school debt, brother. Okay, you're in debt. Now, when we get to al-jami'ul ghani, and thank you, the rest of them are lying. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It's Ramadan, God forgives. Uh, so for those of you who are, when I get to the name God the most rich, you know what I want you to do is just say, you're the most rich, pay off my debt. And I guarantee you, he'll pay off the debt. What's your responsibility? Don't get back into debt. So uh, how many of us are looking for health? How many of us would like health? Uh, it's a, it's a, such a random question though. But what is health? So I'm going to ask a question. It's called a koan. It's going to de-intellectualize your brain. I'm going to ask you a question, and that is our uh, third activity. And finally, I'd like to make a dua. I must end by 8.10, so let us begin. I'll ask you a simple question because most of you are still listening to the talk with your frontal lobe. You're listening to me, analyzing what is this guy selling me. So I would like to take your brain off the receiver and ask you to incommunicate, because this also, your heart will know if I'm trying to sell you something. But if your heart says, I think he cares about me, that's all I ask you to do is take that feeling in. So number one, I ask us, let's go down the list. Has anyone in this room met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes or no? Initial answer is no. Okay, initial answer is no. Spiritual answer, we're going to get there. So brother, have you met Allah? Has your body met Allah? No. Has your brain? Depends on what drugs you're taking that week. Right? right? So besides that, if you're besides taking some type of hallucinogen, no, right? Has, is there another part of you besides your body and besides your brain? Okay. Has this part of you ever met God? When did it meet God? So everyone in this room or just the really good ones? I mean, LeBron James, did he meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes or no? Yes, he did. When? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us in Surah A'raf, Exactly. God created everyone, your favorite rapper, basketball player, and your grandma. And we were all standing there and God said, am I not your Lord? And what did we say? We didn't say yes. I wish we said yes. When your wife says, do you love me? What did you say? Yes. You say, of course. That's what we said. We said, of course, but alas, who else could be God? Here's my real question to you. I told you to take the phone off the receiver. Did you meet Allah? Yes. My question is, how was your health when you met Allah? Ah, now you see that? You're, someone's looking for the answer in your brain. That's what I want you to make dua for. Now today, when I'm going to get to it right now, and I say, pray for health. Brother, I want you to be like, not this health. This is going to come and go. I want the health that I had the day I told Allah, Allah, you're Allah. How could, you, how could there be anyone else? I want that type of health. So again, I'll ask you, y'all want health? Yes, but now you have to think wider. So when we say, oh Allah, I ask for health, or oh Allah, I ask for money, 
I don't want you to ask for money. I want you to ask for an experience. I want you to say, Oh Allah, I wish I never have to ask how much. So you walk into the, to the Roly store and you're like, Ah, I like it. And, I, and well, I've given my zakat, I've done everything, I'm going to give myself a roli. That's not being rich, that's abundance. So again, everyone in this room is like, yo, can I get something? So I'm going to quickly change your dial very quickly and then we'll make these four duas and we will conclude because of self-value. So right now we recognize that in this room you met Allah. Yes, you did. How was your health when you met Allah? It was perfect. Can you all say the word complete health? In your next dua, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana, I want you to say, Oh God, give me complete health. Not sometimes it hurts here, sometimes it hurts here. I'm going to push the envelope further. If you've met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which body will you take to Jannah? I know it will be taller, I know it will be stronger, faster, and you'll have a lot more nerve endings. Which body? What are you going to look like in paradise, friends? Which body will you have in Jannah? Go, go a little bit further than your heart. Well, friends, what am I going to look like? What is Wissam Sharif going to look like in paradise? No, youth of who though? Of me. I want you to say, brother, which body is going to walk you into Jannah? That one. Yes, that's all I want you guys to say. Which, which elbows are going to, are you going to flex in paradise? Those. Now you are sitting here saying, but what about when I die? But that's the whole point of believing. Allah is going to bring you back together, yes or no? So which body on the day of judgment is going to speak when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yaseen, الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاكِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ so the people on the day of judgment, their mouths will be sealed and their body parts will begin to speak. So just, I know everyone sees it like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. But if this body is going to say, Wissam did bad, what also could this body say? Thank you. So why are we afraid of this? Because we don't value the self. If, if brother, you, whatever you watched, your eyes are going to say you're going to hell. Right? Isn't that what we think? But then aren't your eyes going to say he went to the masjid, he saw some guy, he prayed? Yes. So two things. You met Allah and that experience was unbelievable. And after you realized that you met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what was the memory? That, because Allah said, you're going to forget. What was the way? When God said, am I your Lord? What did we say? Qalu, bala, shahidna. We said shahidna. So friends, anytime you're sad, anytime you're lost, anytime your friends drag you out to a hookah lounge and you're like, ah, this is not my place. How can you connect to that memory? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. As soon as you say ashhadu, so here's my third question. Did you meet Allah? Yes, you did. Is it He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who gave you this body? So how are you going to treat this body? You're going to treat it very gently. But the third question that I ask you to do now is if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness, will he forgive you? Now this, I don't know. It, some people are saying randomly yes. So will you do this second exercise with me now? I ask all of us to recognize that we are headed to paradise. And I ask you once with me to say, Astaghfirullah. Barakallahu feekum. Our first activity. Knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal right now, did he hear everyone in this room? And if, uh, I'm just going to point at you, if that guy didn't say it, does he still get included? 100%. You have had sound hadith, I'm not going to point at you. If this young man sat here and goes, I refuse to say anything, the angels will still take his name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, there was a guy sitting amongst them. You got to look up this hadith. There was a man sitting amongst them. He was just there to be there because his homies were there. And Allah will say, his company is befitting of his reward. So even if you didn't say astaghfirullah, were you just forgiven, yes or no? So I ask you in the state of istighfar, being forgiven, Pray for four things. And I ask you to pray this upon yourself, sitting up in the form of adab, and just take a form for two minutes. Say, O oh, our Lord, may I have security. I wait. 
drop your anxieties, your emotional baggage, and say, may I have security. May I have peace. Translate this. What does peace mean? Salam. What else? What does it mean to you? Safety. Uh, in a time of turmoil and people, you know, saying bad things to Muslims, it's like not feeling anxious. Anyone feeling anxiety more recently? A little bit depression? Yeah, okay. I don't know about you guys. I, I look like this. And I fly four days a week. So yes, I'm peppy and happy, but I ask Allah, may I have peace. Now I ask you to pray again. May I have health. What kind of health? Complete health. The health that I originally had inside me within the space. And now I ask you to pray knowing that you deserve this. May I have a life of ease. You, you feel uncomfortable. One more time. May I have a life of ease. Four things. You will continuously pray for yourself until the azan happens. Oh Allah, may I have security, peace, complete health, and a life of ease. Can someone explain of life of ease? Is it okay to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you wake up? How many people take the subway? How many people ride the train? Okay, is it okay to wake up and say, I deserve ease. Oh Allah, make sure I, I make all my trains. Is that okay? Yes. When the Sahaba, one Sahabi broke his shoelaces, what did he do? He's like, Allah Ta'ala, I need a pair of shoelaces. And he prayed to Allah for shoelaces. And then he went and bought shoelaces. This to me is a very powerful thing. How many of us have prayed, oh God, make my life easy? Well, you did. Okay, no. Praying for a Lamborghini does not make, oh Allah, make my life. Let's ask that question one more time. I know the Allahumma Lamborghini people. I, I know them. Uh, I, I have met them at Hajj. So raise your hand one more time. How many people have prayed to Allah, oh Allah, even though I live in New York, may I live with ease? Barakallahu feekum. Second activity. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you, will you all come? Repeat these du'as to yourself. Can you all make it stick far with me six times? Would you be able to do that now? Except I need you to do a logical progression here because imagine if you met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and God said you could have whatever you want. And then you said, oh Allah, forgive me. And then what? Right? If you asked for God's forgiveness and he gave it to you, what would you pray for then? That's, that's the point. Nobody knows. They're like, uh, I've had this whole hell thing planned out for a long time. I've been rolling the dice on hell here. How, how many people have entertained the idea they may go to hell? The rest of them are lying. That's okay. Okay, we've entertained. How many of you in the room have entertained 13 minutes before Salatul Maghrib, or at least my time ends? How many people believe they're going to paradise? Oh, no, no, no. We got time out here. Time out, time out. Insha'Allah, in my book, means if God wills. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked about Surah Nuh, Surah 71, wa nahnu humul warithun. God said, and they will inherit in paradise. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked by the companions, how could you inherit in Jannah? Like, how could you inherit more land? Now listen to this. This is where I have to rest the inshallah. I'm going to bench it. Allah subhanahu wa taala's Nabi said, for every human being created, Allah built a house and put their name on it. Some will make it, some will not. So in the metaphysical multi-universe right now, bro, what is there in Jannah? With whose name on it? Inshallah? No, no, no. No, no there is definite. So you see my logic? So like I, I, I'm just, I'm poking at you so the rest of us can say, brother, in Jannah, there's a house with whose name on it? Yeah, and? And yours too, brother. Not inshallah. Inshallah could be 10 more houses. So now one more time, how many of you are going to Jannah already decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawni wa amal wa a'udhu bika min al-nari wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawni wa amal. I know your heart saying, did I just do something haram in the masjid? <laughs> Is this allowed? We'll get there, inshallah. Inshallah. We'll get there momentarily. So everyone with the first five syllables, astaghfirullah. Did Allah Azza wa Jal Asami'ul Basir, did He hear us? Astaghfirullah. Did Allah Azza wa Jal then now, did He forgive us? 
Of course. But how do I know? Bro, you don't know what I did yesterday. Do you know what's on my phone? Did you see my internet? Ah, uh, now what? Friends, did Allah forgive us? Yes. This is where I'm going to ask you, and it's allowed to ask, do you worship Allah? You worship your sins. Who's stronger? Your bad deeds or Allah Azza wa Jal? All right. And then you're like, astaghfirullah, what kind of cheat question is that? But how many times do you say, oh my sins, oh my sins, I can't do this because of my sins. But Allah said, but sins are the way you get to Allah. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So did Allah Azza wa Jal, in all of His forgiving characters and all of our sins combined, is Allah's mercy greater or are all of our sins greater? Allah's mercy. So did Allah hear you? Yes. So we are forgiven in this metaphysical multi-universe moment right now. What is the next step? Astaghfirullah. Now, if, how many people have ever sinned in their life? I, I, I got, I, I'm done here, okay? Yeah, right? I, I don't know what else. I'm going to quick pause here. If we did a mock day of judgment and Allah Azza wa Jal said, everyone turn in your phones, how many people go into hell? The rest of you lying. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's the truth. The, the, these angels be like, we've been writing the whole history. Be like, no, this was enough. How many people could turn in their phone, everything you watch, talk about, and it's not how to, you're like thinking how haram is his phone. It's the things we watch on YouTube, the chatting we do, isn't it enough that your Lord would say, you backbited, you did this, you did this? Mock day of judgment. Every day I pick up my phone, I think, oh, what about this book? What about this? One more, friends. If Allah forgave this guy, can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive someone from your past? Can you identify your mom, your dad, your uncle, your chacha, your grandfather, the imam that when you were a child? And how many of you have ever been hurt by a parental figure? They told me I was dumb. They told me I couldn't recite Quran. <laughs> and that didn't really work out for them so well. But it hurt my feelings a lot. And until recent, I held that anger inside me. Could you say astaghfirullah and forgive someone from the past? Astaghfirullah. How many people have forgiven someone from the past? Just the little things. Now, maybe your mom did something, your dad did something, maybe you, now someone from your presence, someone who has, you have a little tension against, someone who maybe cut you off. The TSA guy, everyone say, Astaghfirullah. Allah heard me, Allah Azza wa Jal forgave me, I forgave those in my past, those in my present, and now I say, Astaghfirullah. Who is the last person who's missing from this list? Who's not on this list? Mm, Someone else? I'm not on this list. Did you say, I forgive me? Can you say, Astaghfirullah? Now I want you to gather all your sins and say, I forgive me. Because if Allah Azza wa Jal forgave you, who are you to hold your sins against yourself? How many of you missed a prayer once? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. And then you spend the rest of the day dragging yourself. Oh, I missed the prayer. Oh, I did this thing. It stops you from doing good deeds. How many people can admit to that? I have missed a prayer, and then I was like, oh brother, I can't come to Bayan, I missed. I was like, how are you gonna let shaitan win? So one more time, friends, on the fourth, say astaghfirullah. I ask Allah, oh Allah, you forgave me, I accept your forgiveness, now I forgive me. Wa alaykum as salam wa Now can any one person tell me, how can a Muslim forgive themselves? How can a mu'min forgive themselves? Friends, I have less than a minute left. I want to read the names of Allah. Would you tell me how can a Muslim forgive themselves? If you don't have an answer, I, I can give you one. Today, uh, how many people, you'll break with uh, dates, right? Most people. How many people, before you put the date on your lips, can you say, oh Allah, I deserve this? That is accepting joy. Only you could do it. Because how many of you believe saying, I deserve this is not an Islamic thing. It's not a way to be with Allah. That's why I'm asking you. You'll never forgive yourself if you don't say, I deserve this. When you go to sajda today and you feel your, your entire skull relax and you say, I deserve this. This is the way the mu'min can enjoy his Lord. So tomorrow morning, khalas, maybe you don't like the date example. Tomorrow, no one's around, nangu pangu, pachak pachangu, you turn on the shower, and the water is about to hit you. Can you say, I deserve this. I deserve this. 
This is joy. Can you say Astaghfirullah? I asked for your forgiveness. I accepted your forgiveness. I forgave those in my past. I forgave myself. I forgave myself by accepting joy. There's only one more Astaghfirullah left. So would you say, if, if you follow me, most of you should stop here. I'm only going to take this for the few people who want to make this jump in the greatest Ramadan in 30 years. Astaghfirullah. Only say this one if you recognize I am a miracle and so are you. Everyone listens to these cool talks and waits for the great sheikh to come and do a magic trick, right? And then when great sheikh came, my iman was so high. So then I felt iman. The iman was inside you the whole time. The guy who could get it to jump up made you feel like he was special. When I say, Rabbana atmim lana nurana, O our Lord, complete our light. In order to complete something, what does that mean already is inside me? To come, yes, nur. And where did that nur come from? It's hard to say. No one else is going to say it. It came from Allah, friends. The sixth astaghfirullah is only for those people in this room who recognize not giving to orphans makes you a miracle. Not helping out your wife makes you a miracle. But waking up in the morning and recognizing, I am forgiven. And because I'm not going to spend my whole life going, oh man, I'm anxious about hell, I'm going to become a miracle in this man's life. I'm going to become a miracle in this person's life. And every single individual that I meet, I get a chance to become a miracle in your life. So when God gives you the opportunity and some kid says, I'm going to get you into Jannah. And you meet some Syrian baby in the fourth level of Jannah and he goes, ah, got you into paradise. What are you talking about, kid? Remember me on the video? Allah told us we were going to Jannah anyway. But we had to like suffer a little bit so you all could come too. Like word? And that's how simple it was. Your Lord left treasure chests all over, Pokemon all over this world. All you got to do is pick it up. But you will not do that because what's easier, friends? Sheikh, make dua for me. I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry to catch you on that because that's easy. But is it easier to sin right now and say astaghfirullah and then get up and say, I'm still a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will emanate miracles. I will give miracles. So if someone comes and asks for 10,000, say, brother, today I have 10. But tomorrow I will sponsor 10,000 orphans. I intend to do that. I'll conclude on the simplest of... So time is complete, so I cannot... Could we read the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It'll take me two and a half minutes. If you have the names, let's just read them. Uh, for the rest of you, I'm going to ask you a quick question. It'll put the brain back on the receiver. Uh, does anyone have a, a small baby at home? Small baby? Anybody? Pregnant? Wife? Okay, when, when wife has a baby in the stomach at 14, at 10 weeks, does the baby's heart beat at 10 weeks? Yes, it does. Is the brain formed... No. So the heart beats without the brain? Yes. The 10th cranial nerve that goes from my brain down through my spine and tells my heart to beat doesn't exist except my heart beats for several weeks. Would someone tell me how that heart beats? That is beautiful. That is a beautiful example. But Allah is so beautiful that He even gave a reason here. And I think all of you know it. It is because the heart has, had, and will always maintain an intelligence. Except this guy won't shut up long enough for you to hear him. So I ask you, if this guy is telling you, Yo bro, this makes sense. Allah loves me. I need to do good here on this earth. Like Allah put a neon sign on the White House for the love of God. When will we, when, when we have to secretly start donating through our phone because it's illegal to do HHRD? One more time, only if you are a miracle. Astaghfirullah. Huwallahu alladhi ilaha ilaha illahu alimu alghaybi wa shahada huwa rahmanu rahim if you know it, follow along. If you don't, pull it up on your phone. And if you don't, sit like you want to know it. Al-Malikul Quddus Salam 
المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر five times al mutakabbir al mutakabbir al mutakabbir al mutakabbir al mutakabbir al khaliq al bari al musawwir al ghaffar al qahhar al wahhab al razzaq al fattah al alim al qabid al basit al khafid al rafi' al mu'izz al mudhill al sami' al basir ask allah for whatever you want in these moments الحكم العدل اللطيف اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيظ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الحكيم الودود If you feel Allah's love, make the dua Oh Allah, love me اللهم إني أسألك حبك وحب من يحبك المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق جزاك الله خير الجزاء A portal has been opened Ask your Lord for whatever you want And in response, ask for Allah to show you that you are a miracle. Don't ask for miracles in your life anymore. You won't know if you can, you can handle it. Ask Allah to show you the miracle within yourself. When someone calls you and says, be a miracle for someone else, then do that. I ask and request that you pray for your parents, take your mother and father's names, keep them in your heart. It took a little extra five minutes, so I hope that we'll still appreciate your schedule. If I'm correct, the local time, uh, what time do you break local? 27, my humble request. Astaghfirullah al azim You're already forgiven. Just um, I see how much can come out of it. Between now and Salat al Maghrib, Astaghfirullah al azim Astaghfirullah al azim Jazakallahu khairul jazaa. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.